Live from the Acres Broadcast Center inside East Stadium, this is the Husker Athletic Director Show with Trev Alberts. Against Lawrence on the other end, lays it up. Shot blocked by Williams. Into the hands of Lawrence. The baseball pass and the jab. The jab by Gary on the other end. What a block by Bryce Williams to get that one started. Juwan Gary cherry picking after the badly missed three and able to throw one home and get this crowd on their feet. Goes off the bounce, goes behind your back, works foul line, pots for three, top of the key, you betcha! Natalie Potts, the Big Ten Freshman of the Week with a triple. Sir Mylaney, bad pass, and that's a nice! They did it! Conference champions! All by themselves! And the players dogpile! Oh, look at that emotion released! That's a happy bunch of Huskers and so deserving! Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. And it's our time to sit down with the athletic director for the University of Nebraska, Trev Alberts, his monthly show. A lot to cover over what's been a wild 30 days for all the fall sports wrapping up and the winter sports getting cranked up. If you want to be a part of the program, 402-413-2400. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Did you find some turkey? I'm sure you found something to eat, right? Yeah, we had a lot of turkey and a lot of family and uh, an awful lot of fun, you know. And uh, the reality is, and as, as I'm getting older, I'm not that old, but 53, my wife and I were kind of chatting with the family. Boy, we have, we have so much to be thankful for, all of us, you know, to live in a, a country like we do, to live in a community like Lincoln, Nebraska, in a state like Nebraska. Uh, listen, we have our challenges, uh, but... We are a blessed people, and uh, so great Thanksgiving. Obviously, wish the game would have turned out a little bit differently, uh, but just an awful lot to be thankful for. Let's start with our fans. How about the turnout? How about the attendance and the turnstiles for your events this fall? Yeah, you know, you, you just can't say enough about Husker Nation and our fans, and uh, we try to talk about them all that we can, um, mostly, again, as a way of saying thank you. Um, you look at our fall sports, it just... And it really kind of set the tone and started with Volleyball Day in Nebraska. And, uh, you know, that, that event. And I, I would say I, I would like to, um, I'd like to recognize and salute and congratulate all of the teams that made the NCAA tournament. I mean, you think about every one of the participants that participated in Volleyball Day in Nebraska made the NCAA tournament. That's right. And so congratulations to UNO and to Wayne and to UNK. So really, really uh, awesome in that end. But, um, and then to see what happened with our soccer program and make the Elite Eight and get to host you know, several games at Hibner Field uh, in the tournament to watch the fans. I mean, to be honest with you, our fans were so remarkable, and, and there was a learning experience for us. I mean, we had a real challenge parking all of them. I mean, traffic was a nightmare. We need to be, get better there. We will. Um, and then again, to see our, our football fans continue to come out, support our program. I mean, it wasn't quite a million people, uh, but just under 900,000 people showed up to support Husker athletes in the fall season. We're grateful. Uh, and we're going to continue working really hard to have programs that, that, uh, that honor them and that they're proud of. You mentioned the, the football game on Friday. That, that one needed to go in the win column to make bowl eligibility for the program. Just give us your thoughts now that you've gone 12 months with Coach Rural as the head of the program. Well, first of all, grateful uh, that Matt Rural is our head coach, you know, and um, just really pleased at all of his hard work, uh, the people he surrounded himself with, the rest of the staff, the culture that they've built. And, and I got to tell you, um, you know, uh, maybe it's just because I'm getting older, but, to, you know, I was in the locker room after the game, and, and um, it was just really hard to see those young men hurt the way that they did. And on the one hand, you know, it, it just really tugged at my heartstrings to see them in such pain. On the other hand, um, you know, that, that's my heart. My head tells me, all right, the right things are happening because they really cared, and it really, really hurt Greg. Uh, those young men invested so much, they deserved better. And I think as Coach Rule had, had talked about a little bit, you know, just furious um, in a sense that the players didn't get to, to experience a bowl game and, and to accomplish some of their goals. But, um, you know, all of us, uh, administration, coaches, you know, there's all, all of us looking inwardly now going, what else can we do? How do we continue growing? How do we continue building? Um, what do we need to do? But those, those core things that we talked about, and sometimes they don't always show up in the wins and losses, but, you know, we, uh, I believe we're a tough team. You know, you, you look across the board of our fall sports, and soccer is a tough team. You know, I want Husker athletics, and I want the teams, and I want their coaches. I want us to play coach with an edge, and I want us to be tough. That's what Nebraskans expect. I think our volleyball team is really tough. They have a mental toughness about them. 
I think football is a tough team. Uh, I, the, the way they practice this year, I think development was real. Um, I love the fact that Coach Rule didn't make excuses. Everybody has injuries. Everybody has those types of things. Um, we didn't talk about that, didn't talk about the schedule. What we did was just try to get better, next man up. You saw a lot of young players playing. Um, clearly, there's a lot of work we have to do, right? Um, there's things that uh, we need to be better at, and that's what the coaches will be focused on. So, in a sense, um, just bitter disappointment, mostly for the players, you know, because I know, I personally lived what they invested, and many of them have invested way more than even than I did, right? Um, so to see them not get that opportunity was, was hurtful, but then to see them and to see people like Ty Robinson asked to come back, I think the culture is set. Uh, I, I think the players clearly responded to the coaching staff, and so now we just, um, all I know how to do, Greg, if things aren't going the way you want them, is just put my head down and keep working. That's what we're going to do. We're going to keep doing the right things. We're going to work as hard as we possibly can. Uh, nobody will outwork us, and we'll continue uh, getting better a little bit every day. You mentioned Ty Robinson announcing that he's going to come back. How challenging is it for football? All coaches have to deal with still this COVID year, the extra mm -hmm. year. And that makes roster management really challenging, doesn't it? Well, you, you know, it does. And, and, and obviously, you know, you recruit young players. So culturally, you're trying to manage. You bring young people in. Of course, they want to play. You've got great seniors who, who have that extra year of eligibility. They want to continue being here. So as your point, managing that. And then you're managing it within freedom of movement, transfer portal, multiple window opportunities, NIL, um, you know, not feeling sorry for coaches, but I, I think it's pretty clear that today's coaching staff and head coaches in particular are dealing with a significant different challenge than perhaps five, ten years ago head coaches were. And so that's where I, I gain a lot of confidence in the fact that Matt Rule is our leader because I, I, I know how intelligent Matt is. I know how strategic he is. Uh, I know that he has the experience of building in previous places that have been successful. And so, uh, you know, our job is to, to continue surrounding him, supporting him, and helping him, and, and, um, and working as hard as we can. Question from the chat room. Mike Mike says, Trev, what goes into figuring out a coach's salary? Some very successful coaches make less than others. How does that work? Well, I'm assuming he's referring to football. Yeah, and, and, and every situation is a little bit different, right? I mean, there isn't a, you know, a, a standard way of that everybody, a lot of it comes down to, to market value. It comes down to, you know, um, you know, where your program is, who you're looking for, what other options that they might have had. Um, I, I, I will say this. I, I do think that, um, you know, as, as dollars continue to flow differently into our space in the sense that as more and more of our dollars are directly going to student athletes either right now via through collectives or eventually in settled litigation that ultimately you know sort of uh, uh, legislates or, or, or mandates some of that I think you'll see some adjustments at the end of the day there's a scarcity of resources and how you allocate those will be decided you know by administrators in terms of what's in their best interest so um, they're all a little bit different obviously coach rules a little bit different he had a mitigation clause with the Carolina Panthers and so you know, sometimes you have to pay buyouts, sometimes you don't. Sometimes at the beginning of the contract, you're paying less because of the mitigation. And on the back end, you're paying more. So I think every situation is a little bit different. Um, and how every institution handles it is a little bit different. Uh, but clearly, I think there's going to be some changes to that as we move forward. Does he have control over the budget for his staff? Is yeah. that him, or do you consult with him on that? We work together. The, the great thing about Matt is, you know, he, he, uh, we're, we're, we're in lockstep together. We talk about everything. I mean, I, I, Matt is a head football coach. I mean, I, I, um, he, he knows more about football than, than, than he's forgotten more than I know. So he runs the football program. Obviously, my job is to ensure not just for football but the rest of our programs that we have resources necessary to, to uh, uh, be competitively successful. But at the end of the day, there's a salary pool that's negotiated prior to their arrival that they can allocate in the way that they choose in the best interest of the program. Tim and Carney wants to know about, uh, he says, I did not like the one football game that was on Peacock. Can you explain how that happened? Well, it's a good question, Tim. You know, how it happens is uh, the Big Ten Conference engages in uh, negotiations with networks. And uh, uh, so at the end of the day, of course, those are not decisions that are made by institutions. Um, but... You know, the reality is this, and, and I think the Big Ten, we're really fortunate in the sense that so many of our games are on linear networks and we have the Big Ten network. I mean, our exposure to streaming is relatively limited right now 
in terms of football. Now I think you're going to see in basketball and some of the other sports you're going to see. Um, I think the actual production on Peacock is fantastic. The challenge is what is your Wi-Fi capability and how, what is your speed? That's the issue because I did get some feedback. Number one, folks who don't have access to that. Or number two, that the speeds aren't. So now you're getting, <laughs> you know, the little circle going around right. and around and you're getting disruption. And then also, you know, the issue of, hey, well, I'm buying Big Ten Plus. I'm buying... The reality is, um, and the thing that we need to face, is you know, the entire sort of media industry about how, it, how they aggregate those and how they're distributed and how people consume live sporting events is changing dramatically. And this is the first step. But I think even ESPN has announced um, that it, by 2025, this is the wave. We need to be prepared that all games will be on streaming services. And so at some point, somebody will figure out, you know, um, how to create a bundle or bundle streaming services, kind of like you did with cable. But today, we're kind of stuck with these types of deals. So as I say all along, you know, in the old day, the highest revenue piece that we had was ticket revenue. And today, television revenue and NCAA distributions are significantly higher than any other source of revenue. So we don't get to have it both ways. We don't get to, you know, have that revenue and then not... Uh, uh, have our media partners have some say. But I, I do apologize to our fans that were disrupted in that area. Um, but I, I also need to be honest that um, it's not going away. And quite frankly, over the next several years, we'll probably be accelerating. Well, it's pretty neat. The Wisconsin game is on primetime on NBC. The Black Friday game with Iowa is on CBS. How did you feel like year one with the football season went with your new TV partners? I thought it went really well. You know, it's very clear to me, and, and the CBS deal was, was much smaller, so they still had some of that inventory with CBS that they had to, um, to deliver on. So next year will be CBS's full year of only Big Ten games in that window. Uh, but I think some of the, I don't want to misquote it, but I think, you know, um, Big Noon kickoff on Fox was the highest rated window in all of college football. We'll have a 2.30 exclusive window on national TV and CBS and then primetime on NBC. Wow. That was the vision all along where the Big Ten Conference on linear TV could own Saturday. Our job at Nebraska is to ensure that we have a football product that is selected by those networks, and not only selected, that in those primetime games when everybody's watching, we find a way to win. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Very good. 402-413-2400. Let's go to the phones for the first time. We'll stay in Lincoln. Jason, you are up first tonight with Trev. Hey, Trev. Hi, I Jason. Got like a silly question. I got like a silly question, but so the, we're, it's Go Big Red, Nebraska Red. Why do basketball and volleyball wear white jerseys at home, but the football team wears red jerseys at home? I've never understood it, and it bothers me. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> well, um, that's a really good question. Um, I can't honestly tell you uh, off the top of my head, uh, uh, give you the details of exactly why it's that way. I don't, I don't know if it's more the tradition of those sports. I'm thinking about college basketball. It is. It, it's just you, the tradition. You wear your whites at home. You wear your yeah. whites at home. Football seems to be a little bit different. Um, I don't know what I would do about that, Greg. Should I bring that up with the NCAA? Uh, I, and I've always wondered why basketball. I, I would prefer to see our darker color at home yeah, games. Yeah. But I think they're the great, I think they're cool looking uniforms. But I think you're right. I think it's more sports specific. I did not know, I don't know the specifics of volleyball. I don't know. No, that. no I don't either. I, I think it just kind of becomes tradition of the sport that ends up getting embraced nationally. It's certainly not a mandate, it's not a Big Ten thing where it says you'll wear whites at home. Um, but I agree with that. I, I think it would be pretty cool, I mean, um, wearing our reds at home. Question in the chat room about the tunnel walk. It says, Trev, it seemed like we had some issues this year, maybe the longer walk from the new facility. Your thoughts about the tunnel walk here this year? I'm sure you've heard this this week. Yeah, 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 we've got some work to do there. And part of that is, you know, working with the new staff. And uh, it is a different tunnel walk. There is a different time. Um, I'll also tell you that our football coach, um, he's a tremendous communicator. And sometimes um, he gets on a roll in the pregame speech. <laughs> and so sometimes we get a little bit of delay. The reality is I think we'll, we'll, we need to do a better job of that. Um, it's a simple timing thing. Um, at the end of the day, what I'd hate to see is I'd hate to see our team get a penalty for not being out on the field. Uh, and then you'll also see sometimes the, um, the visiting team, they'll wait and wait and wait, and finally they just run out on the field. It'd be nice for us to be prior to that. But there's, there's no nefarious intent. Uh, on that end, I think, yeah, coming from the go big with a longer walk and a different 
Uh, we've got, with a new staff, we've got some work to do to clean up uh, that timing, but we'll get that done. You mentioned go big. Give us an update. There's workers over there every day. We've got a good view here from our studios. <laughs> Still doing great. You know, uh, we, we have all of the delivery dates on every single area. And uh, as I've said uh, recently, most all of those spaces are supposed to be transferred over by the end of this calendar year, which is coming up, or the middle of January, somewhere in there. There's a couple spaces, I think it's the academic support and life skills that are more like in March. So the question is, you know, how disruptive do we want to be? Do we just stay where we are until the end and then do it this summer? But uh, project's coming along very well. Um, you know, just like anything else where football is, um, you know, when you build a new house, there's some things that you need to come back in, some punch list items. But by and large, I think it flows really well. I think the players really appreciate it. And I can just tell you this, uh, makes a big difference in, in recruiting. Uh, this is so. not a facility that any other uh, athletic departments have. Um, what I'm really excited about, I mean, football is benefiting today. What I'm excited about and what I think our donors are excited about, this is a facility that's going to impact all of our student athletes. So as we move over there with a bigger space for the training table, as we have academics and life skills and, and other areas move over, um, this will... This will be the elite training and development facility in college athletics right here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and we're honored to get to have that. That's cool. Seatbelt Youth saves lives and prevents injuries. Nearly 15,000 lives saved per year. Buckle up this message from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Need to work a break in 402-413-2400. More with Trev coming up. Hey, Husker fans, Alumni Hall is your ultimate Husker shopping experience. The best and largest selection of apparel for the whole family. Adidas, Champion, Columbia, plus gifts, accessories, and all of your tailgating needs. UNL students, faculty, and military always receive a 10% off in-store, and you can earn cash back with Hall Pass rewards. Shop their downtown Lincoln or South Point Pavilion locations or anytime at alumnihall.com. Alumni Hall, where Husker fans shop. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Farmers, ensure your engines have the power and performance to get the job done. Central Valley Ag can help with Ruby Field Master Diesel. With 4.5% more power and up to 5% better fuel economy, you can be sure your equipment is running on the best fuel. Register to win 500 gallons of Ruby Diesel when you contract 500 gallons or more. Enter to win at cvacoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. There's room at the table. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Wow. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at nebraskachiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Hey Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student-athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. would like to remind you if you haven't already to unhook your outdoor hoses and check faucets for leaks so your pipes don't freeze. As the official plumber of the Huskers, you know who to call when a plumbing issue arises. From frozen pipes to clogged drains, we can help you protect your home this winter. Give John Henry's a call today to schedule at 435-5555. 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. John Henry's Plumbing. Back inside our Acres Broadcast Center, Acres is the Midwest premier John Deere dealer. Acres, they have solutions for every field. It's our athletic director show for the month of November, 402-413-2400. Hey, you have an undefeated basketball team. How much <laughs> fun's that been? Well, it's it's been an awful lot of fun. Yeah, it's, uh, again, just so proud of Fred and and uh, our coaching staff. I you know I, That's a fun team to watch. It's a fun team to coach. I know Fred's having a lot of fun, and... The reality is the schedule changes a little bit, it right? Does. The next four, um, I think, you know, of course, you got Creighton on there. I think you got Sunday. Uh, Big that one. Sunday, Kansas State. You got some other teams in there that, but, but this is a team, again, I, this is a team that I think Nebraskans can identify with. They play really hard, they share the basketball, uh, they're aggressive, um, they rebound. Like, it's, it, it's a fun team to watch. And uh, I'm really, really pleased for Fred. And I'm, I'm just, I think the schedule was really good for them to start out. I mean, you got, you got a lot of new players, right? Mm -hmm. You got portal guys, and so as they continue to grow, I, I tell you what, I went to the Duquesne game. That that was a team with a lot of talent. They had length, they had athleticism. Um, we were pushed. Our team responded. Like I, I saw some really really good things, and so um, I love their aggressiveness. I, I love Coach Lenzer. Of course, I've got a history with him from Cedar Falls, Iowa. But I like the intensity Same that he brings. You guys? Same high school. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He he he. He's fell one tackle short of breaking my all-time football tackle record in high school. First time you've mentioned this. I think. Well, he he claims that um, it might have been rigged, and he's probably right. Uh, but he's just an amazing person, amazing yeah. coach. Um, and again, I resiliency and toughness, uh, I think, is is what this team is can and be about. I, I, I love watching rank play. I mean, again, you look at all of their players. Bryce Williams, um, I think uh, you know they've shot the ball well. Uh, I. 
I'm excited to see where they can go with this team. KC's fun to watch, too. He's hard not to, to enjoy, yeah. and the fans love him. But you know what I, what I saw him do a little bit even the last game is, listen, his play, he played with it himself. He didn't miss a shot the entire game, didn't miss a free throw. And so, you know, if you play within the flow of the – he's going to get his points. But we have other scorers. We have guys that can get to the rim. Um, and we've got the toughness uh, on the line. And, you know, you, how do you not like to cheer for Alec? I mean, right. just the way he plays, is, it's just, he just plays with a joy that you can feel. I think the team looks like they enjoy playing with each other. I mean, so many teams, it's just these small cultural things that actually lead to, and I give Fred a lot of co- uh, you know, credit for leading in that way. Amy Williams seems off to a 4-2 and two start. They had a huge win off the court in the recruiting trail with Britt Prince, a young girl from up near Elkhorn, signing with the Huskers a couple weeks ago. She's one of the best players in the country. A five-star recruit, you know, we spent a lot of time. Amy spent an awful lot of time, uh, and I had the privilege of meeting the family several times. And, you know, at the end of the day, what makes you feel really good is, like, we, we, we talk about and we want young people, not, not every young person in the state of Nebraska, right, is going to choose to come play for the Cornhuskers. There's, it just it's isn't feasible. But what, what I want to have and what sold me on coming here from Iowa was Coach Osborne told us essentially this. He didn't say these words, but you can max out here. Like if you come here and you work, we will have people, facilities, and a vision for every single thing that you need as a student athlete. And you know what I found out? Right. It was true. Yeah. And so that's kind of the contract that the administration makes with – and I want families who, in the state of Nebraska, no matter where you are, if you're a five-star recruit, know you can come to the University of Nebraska and be the best basketball player, best version of yourself, student, whatever it is, socially, spiritually. And I'm just really, I'm really, really proud that, um, that we have the coaches, Amy and others on our staff, that young people are looking up, Jordy Ball softball, seeing who's leading our programs and saying, I want to be a part of that. That says something special. And... Uh, so Amy's got a great team this year, another young team. Uh, I love the Potts kid, young player, aggressive, skilled. Um, and, um, you know, their, their schedule uh, heats up here as well. They play Wednesday night, which right. would be uh, mm-hmm. interesting. Uh, but I, I just, again, I love the trajectory there. And then you add in some of this young talent. I think the sky's the limit for our women's basketball program. Good stuff. Trev Albert's with us, 402-413-2400. Let's uh, go to Omaha. Joe, you're up next with Trev. Good evening. Hello, how are you guys doing? Hi, Joe. How are you? I am well. I'm well. You talk about resiliency and toughness, and uh, that reminds me of the wrestling team. And I just wanted to give a quick shout-out. I got a two-part thing. Quick shout-out to the wrestling team. As of right now, you know, they're starting off great. Top 10 team with, you know, most publications. Got a lot of good wrestlers coming back. Super resilient, super tough. So a shout-out to the wrestling team. But I also wanted to ask... There's some Husker folklore about the, the Florida State game. That was your last game. And we all kind of know, you know, the referee situation. But the folklore that, uh, that I've heard, and I don't know if it's true or not, is that Tom Osborne after the game was very adamant about not talking about the referees after the game, post-game. And, and you're the only one who might have been defiant to that uh, any, any sort of truth to any of that folklore, and I'll hang up and listen to your response. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Joe, and I uh, appreciate the call. I'm, I'm really, uh, I appreciate you bringing up Mark Manning and our wrestling team. Um, you know, he, he's got a tremendous wrestling program, and uh, it's a little bit early, but, you know, we're, we have got, I think this could be among his most talented teams he's ever had. And you're talking about the Big Ten where wrestling is very, very important. And you think about the commitment to Iowa and Penn State, and so... To see Mark and his coaching staff, it's just been, it's been slow, incremental, but consistent progress of just getting better as a program and where they're finishing. So excited to, to watch uh, our wrestling program. So the folklore, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily folklore, uh, but Joe, I, I can confirm, and I would tell you it's probably not my most proud moment uh, as a human being. But yes, Coach Osborne, uh, uh, you know, he's the classiest person you'll ever meet. And... Um, you know, uh, I, I did uh, uh, make some negative comments about the officiating. We all felt, um, you know, that, that perhaps, and I think it was confirmed later, uh, there were several calls that ultimately, if we had, perhaps if we would have had uh, instant replay back in those days, mm-hmm. it could have been different. And uh, so I was reprimanded uh, by the Big 8 Conference, and uh, I did make some comments that uh, was not 
uh, grade relative to the officiating. But, of course, we at that point didn't know that they would win three national championships in the next four years. So we went into that game. I went into that game. It had been 10 years since Coach Osborne coached in a national championship. It was 1983. And so in my mind, I'm thinking this is perhaps his last chance at a national championship. And so to be that close. So um, I don't know if it's folklore, but, yes, I was reprimanded by the Big 8 Conference for negative comments about officiating. I did not know that. It was warranted. But I probably <laughs> shouldn't have said it. <laughs> uh, Andy in Phoenix on our text line said, Trev, Trev, congrats on the raise and extension. Uh, lots of games in the Big Ten have been had some questionable refereeing calls. As an athletic director, what can you do to have the Big Ten be more transparent on some of the calls that they make during, or during reviews of games, targeting holding against uh, some of the ones that are big, big calls? Well, it is a really good question, you know, and it's something that we talk about all the time. And I would tell you that Commissioner Petiti is very serious about this. The, the, the reality is this. Um, officials are human, too, um, and officials do make mistakes. Obviously, we're not trying to embarrass officials. We're not trying to embarrass the Big Ten Conference. But there's a lot on the line here, and that's what gets communicated, right? Uh, we have a lot of communication. There will be times when our coaches get phone calls that say, hey, we apologize, you know, we missed that one. The reality is this, and, and you know, um, not trying to divulge conversation with Coach Rule and I, but I, I think the thing that is a real concern is this. It's one thing to make a, a call that's not right in, in the heat of the moment. Again, this is a fast game, whether it's basketball, football. I mean, it happens so fast. But, but, but the real issue is when we get to replay. Replay is there for a reason. Um, and we need to make sure replay gets it right. What's been challenging at times is you'll, and it's not just the Big Ten. I've seen it on the NFL. I've watched it on the SEC. You will have the official person evaluating who's in charge of training the officials on television will say, well, clearly that's not a catch, and it'll be, uh, you know, and then they go back on and say, confirmed, it's a catch. And so there's a little bit of a credibility issue there, but... We're not ever going to be uh, an athletic department uh, that creates excuses or complaints about officiating. The reality is this. We get calls that go against us. We get calls for us that we probably shouldn't get, you know, and it tends to even out. The reality is this across the board. Um, we're working hard with officials and making sure we have the right ones. It's also a reality that it is getting harder and harder to find officials. Mm -hmm. uh, getting young officials in the pipeline to grow them so that they're prepared on a Saturday night on NBC with everything on the line in a very hostile environment to make the right call is more challenging than you might think. Andy, appreciate it. Thanks for the question. Let's uh, work on a caller before our next break. We'll go to Grand Island and Chris. Good evening, Chris. You are up with Trev. Hey, Trev. How are you? I'm doing well, Chris. How are you? Good. Uh, I have a kind of like a three-part question here. Uh, the first part question is: I want to congratulate you and your fall sports team on one heck of a season, especially for John Cook's volleyball team and John Walker's uh, women's soccer team getting all the way to the Elite Eight. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, thank okay. you. Go ahead. Then the other question is: is I'll give a shout out to all your winter sports teams for uh, men's and women's basketball, uh, wrestling, and especially the women's bowling program. Because I know that Nebraska women's bowling bowling program is pretty good. Absolutely. And the last question is: is I was hearing some rumors here at the the local news stations here in Grand Island and around the surrounding areas about uh, with the expansion for the South Stadium for next year. And I've heard it, that if it keeps getting pushed forward, I don't know if you can comment on this, about there might be some academic troubles. There might be some academic troubles. Mm -hmm. um, well, let, let, let me just kind of walk through. I, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, first of all, I, I agree with you. The work that John Cook and that John Walker uh, have done this year, uh, not at the end of their career, but clearly they've been at this a long time. Uh, I, I tell you, I, I can't be more appreciative. Uh, John Walker, three years ago, um, you know, I don't know what the record was, but it was challenged. 
and he went to work, and he's built this team in large part with Nebraska players. I think he's got 15 Nebraskans. Not that we don't love student athletes from outside of Nebraska, but I, I love the fact that uh, a lot of our players are, are from Nebraska. John Cook just responded in a massive way of taking a elite program and, 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 and just trying to make it even better, right? And we said all along, don't ever take our volleyball program for granted. Back in the day when it was 60 and three in football, and we always thought, well, we're always gonna be winning national championships. It doesn't happen that way. It's tremendous leadership from John Cook. It's his work ethic. It's the people he surrounded himself with and the young ladies he's recruited. Um, winter sports, I agree, fantastic. We'll see where it all goes. Love Paul Klemp and our bowling program. Uh, those are incredible young student athletes that work very hard in that program. Relative to the South Stadium, I, I, I think it's, it is fair to say the reality is uh, our university does have multiple challenges, right? Like, and, and all of these are, uh, are realities. The athletic department, which is a self-sustained athletic department that does not receive any taxpayer dollars or student fees, never has as part of our culture and something we're very proud of, and historically, prior to some of these changes, has actually contributed cash back to campus. In fact, um, we've gone through all of the comp, uh, uh, contributions, and much of this is, 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 is legitimate and, and very fair. But the athletic department, between paying full fare for all of our scholarships, in-state, out-of-state, and international, and other fees, it's about $29 million a year in terms of, um, you know, an economic benefit to our campus. The challenge is, uh, and it's nobody's fault on our campus, is that a convergence of a lot of different things, uh, high school graduating student enrollment numbers are down. So enrollment is down across the country. Um, we happen to be participating in what's called Nebraska Promise, which is a fantastic program that allows free tuition for students from families under $65,000. That's a great program. It's important. We also happen to be a part of the largest inflation ever in our, you know, all at the same time. So you put these convergences together and there are deficits on our campuses. And so tough decisions are going to have to be made. So the challenge for us in athletics is how do we create business strategies that allow for us to do three main things, Greg. It's really important. Our fan base and alumni expect me and our leadership team to deliver these three things. Number one, we need to have enough resources to ensure competitive success. Winning matters at the University of Nebraska, right? Number two, we have to re retain financial independence from our campus, meaning the only thing that could be harder for our campus than what it currently is, is if we, like the vast majority of other athletic departments, needed state taxpayer dollars and student fees to fund our operations. That's number two. Number three is a broad-based athletic department. You don't get 92,000 people showing up for volleyball if years ago we didn't invest in women's athletics at a very high level. So my job is to do those three things and create that business strategy. Sometimes when you're working on those strategies, um, it can be viewed as at cross purposes with challenges on campus. And I think you have to differentiate between what is funded through taxpayer dollars and what is a self-sustained business strategy for the future. That's probably what he's referencing. Um, and um, again, when, when resources are scarce, there's going to be people fighting for resources. We understand that. We'll stay above the fray on that and continue doing our job to deliver in support of our student athletes. Very good. Chris, thanks for the phone call. He dialed us up on our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. Woodhouse is your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying in your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. More coming up next. This statement has not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. When it comes to my lifestyle and diet, I don't always make the smartest choices. Touchdown! Woo! Hey, how about another round and some more chips? But when it comes to taking care of my liver, I do make one very smart choice. Active liver tablets from New Nordic. I used to have real issues with my liver, and at my last checkup, my doc was concerned about my numbers. But since adding a once-a-day active liver tablet, my gut's better, I feel great, and my doctor's happy. 
I ask a lot of my liver, so the least I can do to say thanks is a daily dose of Active Liver. Active Liver is one of many award-winning health products from New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Scandinavia. Purchase at Amazon.com or for a volume discount, visit NewNordicUSA.com. Available as a tablet or delicious sugar-free gummy. Protect and help your liver the easy and effective way with Active Liver at Amazon or NewNordicUSA.com. When you're clocking out and happy hour's already started. But... You're clocking out and happy hour's already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hey Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. Everybody wants a classic Christmas. Well, there's nothing more classic than cash. So until January 3rd, 2024, enter non-winning Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic scratch tickets online, and you could win $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, or $20,000. Hurry and jingle all the way to your nearest Nebraska Lottery retailer and have yourself a classic little Christmas with the whole family of Holiday Classic scratch tickets. Top prize odds vary by game. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. A few drinks at home after work, a couple of hits at a party with some friends, over-the-counter drugs for a minor illness, a new daily prescription, and you're not quite sure how it makes you feel. It doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If it impairs you, driving becomes deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Bananas are only 39 cents a pound at Hy-V. That's not a sale price. That's the price with the Hy-V Perks membership. And 39 cents a pound is not just the price today or this week, it's the Perks price every day. With the Hy-V Perks membership, you can save on hundreds of products store wide every time you shop and count on Perks prices to stay the same. So if you want to pay less for bananas every day, sign up for Hy-V Perks. It's free and easy. Some restrictions apply. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska. Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy from repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. There are a lot of rates out there, and it can be tough to find the right one. Well, let's make it easy. With FNBO's special offer CD of 5.5% APY for three or seven months, you can earn more, save more, and do more. That's 5.5% annual percentage yield for three or seven months with a minimum deposit of $500 and an FNBO Premier Checking Account. Give your savings a great big boost with the Great Big Small Bank. FNBO, member FDIC. There's no community like a Cenex community, and that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. 
Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. It's being well supported by a provider who understands your health interests and goals. It's ensuring you are well connected to a team of caregivers and specialists. It's feeling well cared for by having someone you can turn to who sees you for you. That's the power of being well matched. And that's exactly what CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match does. Meet the provider who is right for you at myprovidermatch.com. Dorothy Lynch, home style, light and lean dressing, endless flavorabilities. It's our athletic director show for the month of November. Trev with us for a few more minutes here tonight. Text question, Doug in Norfolk. Trev, any more discussions on trying to up, get updates out at Haymarket Park? One more time. Any, any updates on more discussions about updating Haymarket Park for baseball? Yeah, we, we've, we've had uh, uh, good discussions. Uh, you know, it's, it's a tri-party agreement, actually. The city's city. involved, the Salt Dog's involved, we're involved. And um, so we're working on that. Doug Ewald, who's our chief financial officer, is also sport administrator for the sport of baseball, working with Will Bold. So obviously there's some things that we want to do there to help advance our program that we actually think can actually add a lot, um, you know, to the park. Uh, for, for everybody and, and perhaps even some community stuff. But I don't have any specific updates, only that we have a vision we're okay. working through and trying to figure it out. Very good. Doug, appreciate the text. Baseball is obviously in the spring. A lot of people want to know if you know when the spring football game is going to take place. Yeah, it's early, and uh, um, we're glad to be able early in terms of its announcement. We're glad to be able to do this. I know people um, s schedule things around the spring game. It's important even in our own city. So April 27th oh, okay. this year is going to be our spring game. So it's a little bit later. Uh, maybe the weather will be a little bit nicer. But, you know, in talking with our football program and Coach Rule, a lot of what they're doing is backing away, you know, if, as you go back from that date in terms of how you're doing all your workouts and training for the – for the players, strength and conditioning, and your off-season workouts. So April 27th will be the spring game, 2024. Um, so we can announce that to our fans. Fantastic. There you go, folks, April 27th. Need to step aside. We were long on the last segment. Need to get a, our final break in. A few minutes still left with Trev. We're back to do that next. Let's face it. Nothing makes you look older than you really are than thinning hair. But what if you could not only increase your hair count, but promote new hair growth without surgery? without drugs with potential side effects, and without a prescription from your doctor. Well, now you can, thanks to a breakthrough new supplement called Hair Grow. Provided by New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Europe, Hair Grow is now available in the U.S. Only Hair Grow contains Tokogaya, a powerful antioxidant that has received a U.S. patent. Multiple clinical studies show Hair Grow is safe and effective in promoting new hair growth. In one study, 95% of the patients using hair grow saw increased hair count. Don't lose more time and more hair. Try hair grow today to feel and look your best. Just go to newnordicusa.com or visit Walgreens or Amazon to purchase. Look younger and feel more confident with hair grow by New Nordic at newnordicusa.com. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. 
Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the trail taming forerunner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network studio, brought to you by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer Acres solutions for every field. We had a caller and a texter allude to this, but congratulations. You're going to be here a while. Well-deserved contract for you, a commitment from the university to you, and I think settle in. This, this place needs some stability. Well, my wife Angela and I and our entire family, obviously, we're, we're Cornhuskers, you know, and, and we're just so honored and uh, privileged to get to, to serve a university that I love. You know, we, we've got... We've got challenges, uh, but I would tell you in looking out at some of these changes and how the, you know, the changes in media affect conferences and all of this that we've talked about, and litigation in the NCAA and, and NIL and transfer portal and ultimately as additional dollars get shifted right to student athletes. I, I don't think there's an athletic department in the country and a fan base in the country that's more reasonably prepared to adapt and adjust to those changes in Nebraska. Um, it's because of our fans. It's because of past leadership who, um, you know, had a, a responsibility to operate this fiscally responsibly. They did. We're the only athletic department in the Big Ten that doesn't have debt. That's remarkable. Yeah. We took out debt on the Go Big project of $50 million, and in this year's budget, it'll all be repaid in this fiscal year. So at the end of July 3rd, uh, June 30th, 2024, back to no debt. So we're well positioned. We'll keep a healthy balance sheet. We'll see where all the changes end up. But we have great coaches here. We have great administrators. We have great people like you, Greg. Together, we can do some pretty amazing things. So it's an honor to be here. Big Ten Championship game Saturday night, Indianapolis, Michigan, Iowa. Jim Harbaugh will be allowed to coach this game. I know you were involved in a lot of calls. Commissioner about that whole thing, the suspension late in the season. How do you feel like the commissioner handled himself through that whole thing? Well, I thought Tony did an outstanding job. Uh, first of all, I've got a lot of respect for the folks at Michigan. You know, Ward Mandel's a great colleague, and I, I played football with Jim. He was captain comeback in Indianapolis yeah. during my time there. And, and um, so it, it was a really challenging situation. And sometimes I think there's information that's accessible to some that maybe all don't know. It's just like you got to be careful what you read, not sure if it's out of context. But... You know, Tony got thrown into a pretty tough situation early on in his tenure. You'd like to have, kind of like Kevin Warren did, frankly, during COVID. COVID. Mm -hmm. You'd like to have a little bit of a runway. Um, but I think he stood on principle. What's in the best long-term interest of the Big Ten Conference? There was no effort by Tony Petiti to try to embarrass Michigan. At the same time, there has to be standards, and he felt strongly about that. I certainly supported him, and uh, we're excited to be working with our colleagues at Michigan and continue building the Big Ten into the best conference in college athletics. Fantastic. All right, let's keep this bas those basketball teams hot, and let's go win a national title in volleyball. Let's, let's do, do that. that. That'd be a lot of fun. Fantastic. Good to see you. Thank you, sir. Trev Alberts with us here, his monthly show. We'll be back in December for another hour with Trev. Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We have another hour of Sports Island. We'll play part of the dig, the weekly volleyball podcast, as they get ready for their first-round matchup against Long Island University, Friday night at the Devaney Center at 7 o'clock. So come on back. Better Hour, Sports Highly, next. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Shop smarter online for your next vehicle with Buy Now from Woodhouse. Car buying 100% online from your local trusted auto partner. Easily compare hundreds of hand-picked, safety-inspected cars, trucks, and SUVs features, capabilities, and payments. Conveniently apply for financing and complete your paperwork for purchase 100% online, anytime, from anywhere. Plus, we'll deliver it to your driveway. 
Woodhouse, delivering a better way to car buy online with Buy Now. Feel like you're always on the run? Me too. As an independent financial professional, I help all kinds of busy people. Young families planning for college, couples working toward retirement, people securing their legacy. Wherever you are in life, Emeritus can help you get more out of life with insurance, employee benefits, and financial services. You're moving fast. Let's help make sure you're on the path to a fulfilling life. Find your next step at Emeritus.com. Insurance products issued by Emeritus Life Insurance Corp. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up.
Good evening. I'm Camden Cohn, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Breaking news on the recruiting front, four-star offensive lineman Grant Bricks has officially committed to the Huskers. Bricks is six foot six and 270 pounds and hails from Logan, Iowa. He's the number one recruit in the state of Iowa and is the sixth ranked offensive tackle nationally. He chose Nebraska over Oklahoma and Kansas State, among others. And moments ago, athletic director Trev Alberts announced that the Nebraska football spring game will be on April 27th. More information on that will come out at a later date. The Big Ten released their football all-conference team for the defense earlier today. Luke Reimer was the only Husker to make a team as he was named third team all-conference by the coaches. Seven other Huskers were named honorable mention list, including Omar Brown, Isaac Gifford, Tommy Hill, Nash Hutmaker, Ty Robinson, and Jamari Butler. Nebraska track and field opens its season with their annual red-white intra-squad, intra-squad meet on December 8th at the Bob Devaney Sports Center indoor track. Field events begin at 4.30, while running events start at 5. Admission is free to the meet. For more information, visit huskers.com. And finally, three Nebraska soccer players were honored by the United Soccer Coaches as senior Eleanor Dale and junior Sarah Weber were each named to the first team all-North region team. Junior Jordan Zaid was named to the third team. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now, get ready for Hour 2 of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Now Minnesota outside, roll shot, Walker blocked back, and it drops. Another block by the Big Red. Berg and Riley, back at Alec, Nebraska, piling those babies up. Fury and White stopping at the foul line after Jazz Shelley, unguarded three, you! Betcha! Jazz Shelley with a Central Valley egg three to start the third. Mm, against Lawrence on the other end, lays it up. Shot blocked by Williams. Into the hands of Lawrence. The baseball pass and the jab. The jab by Gary on the other end. What a block by Bryce Williams to get that one started. Juwan Gary cherry picking after the badly missed three. Served by Laney. Bad pass and that's a nice. They did it. Conference champions all by themselves. And the players dogpile. Oh, look at that emotion released. That's a happy bunch of Huskers and so deserving. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Wow, what a first hour. Great to have Trev Alberts with us, his monthly sit down, and we covered a lot of topics for that. And I, we had some callers we could not get to uh, late in the hour. Uh, so our apologies for that, but we'll have him back next. So I think he's December 19th next month. So uh, that will keep, keep you posted as we get closer to his appearance next month. Welcome to hour number two here tonight. We're going to have part of the dig with Lindsay Peterson, who's a part of the Husker volleyball staff. She'll, uh, she and Jessica sat down earlier today. We'll have part of that for you coming up later this hour. But we still have some open phones, a lot of texts that have come in, 402-413-2400. And now we can all put in our calendars, Jessica. April 27th, the spring game. How about it, that? It's so great to know that so early. You know, I mean, yep. a lot of people make plans in the spring and want to kind of know. And also, I'm glad that it's at the end of April. It was miserable last year. Yeah, and it was like the 19th yes, last year. It, so was it was so cold. It, remember, I had flown back from Hawaii, and I was like, wait, what did I fly back into? Yeah. This, it was really cold. You just never know. You could get a decent day, you get a cold day. And, so. and last year, too, and, and typically it is, it's a big recruiting day. And so the better the overall atmosphere is because I mean I understand that a lot of fans don't want to come sit out in the cold for that and and the better the weather the better the atmosphere the better it is for recruits to kind of get a sense for that and so yeah I think it's it's good and then also just the way that it is it's always kind of weird too with the spring break with football and then having to take a break and because they are limited and that's why when we go to talk about the bowl practices how they are. It right. is. It is a better time because you you have less restrictions. You know, you, you only have a certain number of days that you could be in pads, and a lot of times it's not every day. And so that's where 
the bowl is a lot of times coaches say the better time to really develop and continue to develop those young players even more so than the spring. So, um, but yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm glad to already know that and can put it in my calendar and uh, let my uh, family know because they might come up for that People too. People who were planning weddings and that type of thing, now you know April 27th will be the spring game. Troy from somewhere in Nebraska had a question <laughs> about what's the Director's Cup and what purpose does it serve? Well, it's a compilation of all the sports that you have. You get so many points if you make postseason in soccer and bowling and track and field and all the different sports that Nebraska has. And it's a bragging rights thing. How good is your athletic department? So that's what the Director's Cup is. Nebraska has been climbing the ladder under Trev and with the success of volleyball and soccer in the fall, uh, we're off to a good start uh, here in 2023, 2024. But it's kind of a bragging rights thing. Uh, to try to win that or get as high up of that as you can. So that answers that question. 402-413-2400. Jeff has been hanging on from up in Elkhorn. Good evening, Jeff. Welcome to Sports Nightly. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Um, this was kind of for Trev, but uh, one comment I had was um, – <laughs> My brother was at the uh, Florida State game and commented on how bad the officiating was. He had some choice words and a text message knowing I was going to be on the show here tonight. And then uh, we've got you know tickets to, like any other Husker fan that's listening, we've got tickets, season tickets to volleyball, uh, football, basketball, and our family, um, just a big uh, Husker, Husker family. But uh, my kids are seven. I've got twins that are seven years old. They are LSU fans. They do like Nebraska. They got – their picture with Josiah Alec at the basketball game on uh, Sunday. Uh, but my kids are LSU fans because LSU has some marketing. They, after every baseball game, basketball game, football game, they will post um, on social media a 10-minute highlight clip, and they'll watch all those. So they've got all the players from all the sports for LSU. They probably can name almost as many players for LSU as Nebraska. I was wondering if there's a way that we could implement that for Nebraska where we just have you know, highlights for some of the main sports. Um, and then, you know, the next day when kids wake up after they went to bed, they can see the basketball team one or the volleyball team one, things like that. Well, Jeff, are you, do you uh, watch YouTube? Are you subscribed to our YouTube channel? We are. And LSU has like a, an instant, like for all of them. Um, it, it's not as user friendly per se for uh, the other sport. And part of it too is like, you know, Secondary sports that aren't the top of the market or aren't on regular TV as much as, as well. Well, they post. I, I mean, I was looking at this. I mean, there's the volleyball highlights. There's the basketball highlights. I mean, on the YouTube channel, most of the highlights are posted from most of the sports that are played here and that we get the, the streams for or the broadcast for. But there are some restrictions right. with the Big Ten. But most of those highlights go up pretty Pretty soon after those games and matches are completed that you can go back and watch those highlights. But as far as like posting on, there are kind of time limits, but then also like restrictions with the Big Ten contract and, and what you can post and all that. But uh, most of the highlights are posted on the YouTube channel. Okay. A couple of huge games this weekend, obviously volleyball, basketball, both men and women. Beat the Jays. Thanks, guys. All right, Jeff, appreciate it. Thanks for the phone call. Yeah, the, the BTN's fairly restrictive in some of the ways that they do things, much more so than, than the schools in the SEC. That's just a fact. Yeah, is how it is. And, yeah. um, you know, I I don't know if it, like on if he's referring to the, the website, Huskers.com or, or what, but I do know, you know, they do a really good job. I actually like our YouTube channel a lot. I know I'm probably a little bit biased, but I, I go to a lot of different schools and look at their – we kind of offer a little bit of everything. If you want to see, you know, those high-end produced type videos of the behind the scenes of what the football team's doing week in and week out. If you want to see the place episodes, but right. then if you want to go watch the, the podcast, the dig or Searles, the sideline slice, but then there's also just the, there's the live press conference streams that we stream sports nightly and, and that stays up there. But then, yeah, then there's also those just, if you just want to go back and watch the highlights, you, you didn't, weren't able to catch catch any of the game or whatnot but you know if they're on big 10 plus or on our our channels big 10 now if it if they go on the road and they play like you know somewhere else that we don't have access to that but for the most part and then also a lot of times the digital crew whether it be husker vision or the corn crib folks they do a great job they go shoot it and then they'll turn around those kind of cinematic high-end 
type recaps as well. So, I mean, just whatever your preference is on how you want to consume content, I think our YouTube channel has that option. Yeah, Jeff, uh, go check it out because when we, I'm, a, I'm in the YouTube chat right now, and Andy says Huskers YouTube is legit. The conservative Husker says, love that channel. Four hours to Lincoln says, I don't know about the caller, but I get so many highlight videos almost immediately off of that with Husker highlights. So check it out, Jeff. Maybe you just haven't found the right YouTube spot. But, yeah, Husker Athletics does a pretty good job of pumping a lot of that stuff out. And it's soccer and it's softball and it's volleyball. volleyball. I mean, yeah. it, every sport that it is on the stream or on a TV platform for the most part is is up pretty immediately unless there's kind of some restrictions on the TV rights or whatnot but yeah. for the most part it's it's pretty immediate on that YouTube channel. Yeah. All right, uh, Grant Brex. Wow, what a what a get for Matt Rural and the staff cam that had it in the ticker, the Iowa player of the year, the big offensive lineman and it really came down with a battle with Nebraska and Oklahoma to get Bricks and to beat the Sooners out. That's pretty cool. And a big get in a place that I know all of our fans realize, you better have good offensive linemen. This kid fits the bill, and I loved his little video that yeah, he tweeted out. Yeah, that, that I haven't watched all of it yet, but that was awesome. But uh, I know it got a lot of a lot of hype on that. I can speak from the Oklahoma perspective too. Bill Biedenboe is a heck of offensive line coach. He's got several players that are in the offensive offensive are in the NFL starting on offensive lines. But they won the Joe Moore Award uh, the year that Kyler Murray won the Heisman. And so I know they pump like being O-line you, quote unquote, and a lot of it is, hey, we can put guys in the NFL. But I just, you have to praise Donovan Riola and the job yep. that he's done recruiting. He has done a heck of a job, and he was the one that got, you know, Ben Scott's come here. You could argue that Ben Scott was the MVP of the offense. Right. Um, so I think he just, he, he does such a good job. He's so genuine. I mean, when he came in here for your the the show that week and, and he's talking about you know some growing up in Hawaii and some of the things that they have he's so genuine and, and builds those genuine relationships and and boy those offensive linemen just adore him and I think when they come here they feel that those those recruits feel that family and how much they fit in and it's it's the six-year seniors it's the true freshmen that are on that depth chart that it just is it they travel in a pack and I just I think he's established a great culture that when you come here a lot of times, especially for a kid from Iowa, that you just, it feels like home and you feel like you want to be a part of it. But yeah, huge get and huge shout out to Coach Riola and the job he did recruiting him. He will sign on the 20th of December. That's the signing date, the first one. There's a still the second one in February. Pretty much all of it gets done now in December. And I think some other young guys who've been committed to Nebraska have been working him pretty good. And we'll be able to tell those stories more in depth as we get closer to that. But uh, Daniel Kalen, the quarterback from Bell West, who's been committed to Nebraska for a long time, has been kind of the linchpin of out there trying to get other guys to join this class. Carter Nelson, the outstanding tight end from Ainsworth, he's also been working on bricks. So I think this was a collaborative effort, but this is a big-time get. This is a guy, again, Oklahoma, Kansas State, two good programs, one in bricks as well. He's now a Husker. He's the guy, Jessica, that we sent the, we, the, the truck to his yeah. park in front Is of his school. Across the street, right? Yeah, park, yeah. Right, like three weeks ago they did that. So That's awesome. I, you know that they they pop in some balloons in the football office with that announcement that came out tonight, so that was huge news. The, the, the disappointing thing today for me was the all-conference defensive teams yeah. came out. Nebraska didn't have anybody in the first or second teams. Great for Luke Reimer to make the third team. We had a bunch of honorable mention guys. But my goodness, as good as that defense was all year long, to not get a little bit of recognition, that was disappointing. I was shocked. I, I, was, I could not believe it. I thought for sure. I understand that a lot of times coaches give nods to teams that have more wins, whatever. But there are a lot of teams that barely beat Nebraska because they had a hard time beating the offense. Right. <laughs> I mean, beating the defense. Couldn't score. Scoring on the, on the defense. So I just, I thought they would get more respect than that. I mean, they, they were in the top categories in several defensive statistics. I mean, shoot, they're top five, right, in rushing defense, or they were. And I just, yeah, it's, it's shocking to me that Nash was honorable mention and he couldn't even get on the second team. Right. Or third. I mean, like, I, yeah, I was not very happy when I saw that. I was, in fact, I got a little bit angry about it because I, I just, they're, the, I understand that, you know, you talk about you, you got to win games as a team, but this defense had proved it from the start. They, they opened up with a conference game, and from the start to the end, they were consistent, and there were some players that were absolutely consistent 
consistently better than some of the team, some of the guys that got named ahead of them. Yeah. So again, congrats, Luke. Fantastic finish to his career. He ended up Nebraska's third all-time leading tackler. What a career! I, I said this on the broadcast Friday. I'm going to miss watching Luke play. It's just fun to watch him race across the field, sideline to sideline, the way he played. So happy for him, but disappointed for Ty and Nash. Thought they would definitely get a little bit of love. Tommy Hill had four picks in the secondary. Doesn't get in there. Usually, voters look at some of those stats. He was one of the top INT guys in the league, and he didn't. He got honorable mention as well. Oh well. Offense tomorrow. I wouldn't think there'd be much in there for Nebraska on the offense. Well, and the problem is any of the guys that maybe, uh, other than maybe a, a Ben Scott, which I just I don't I don't maybe. know I, but some of those guys that maybe could have had potential got hurt. You know. Right. Or this was the side of the ball that should have got some love. Yeah. Yeah, I right. thought I thought for sure if you would have asked me, I would have bet money. I'm not a gambler, but I would have bet money that Nebraska would have had at least a couple in the second team. I agree. Or third, more than just Luke on the third team. So um, I know that there's been some angst about Tony White, Husker defensive coordinator. He did interview for the San Diego State job. Pete Thamel uh, from ESPN.com is reporting that that job is going to go to Sean Lewis, who was on Dion's staff. Sean had been a head coach at Kent State in the MAC before leaving to go join uh, Prime staff in Boulder. He now is going to be the new head coach at San Diego State. So I feel bad for Tony. I feel great for us. Does that make sense? And, and I don't know if, you know, again, he's a guy that can be picky at this point, you know, and he could, sure. we heard Coach Rule talk about that. Make sure you have the resources. And so does San Diego State have the same kind of resources as a Power 5 school? Probably not. Or I Power 4 now? <laughs> Probably not quite. You know, but a great recruiting area. Yeah, but still, like, and I know that that he's from that area he's and all of that, but still, like, you know, he he could very well be up for a power five kind of job in uh, the upcoming years. That you know, I think he can he can be picky and and he absolutely deserves. And we, you and I have talked about it at length here on the program that he will be a great head coach, a fantastic head coach one day. But yeah, I'm I'm glad for Nebraska. Hopefully, and I, I just I think it speaks volumes that a guy like Ty Robinson decides to come back and. Um, a lot of that is Terrence Knighton, but a lot of that is Tony White and the job that he did defensively. So, um, yeah, absolutely uh, huge. And hopefully now those defensive coordinator positions that are open, too, don't lure him away either. Yeah, uh, that's the other concern, right? All right, folks, you could win a 2024 Porsche Macon from Porsche Omaha this season. Four lucky Husker fans are going to have a chance to win a 2024 Porsche if they make a full-court putt. At halftime, this is fun when they do this, at one of the four home men's basketball games this season. For more information and the official rules, go to huskers.com slash putt, P-U-T-T. -T. All right, 402-413-2400. We're back to play part of this week's The Dig. That's next. Husker fans, this Friday, your number one ranked Husker volleyball team is set to host the first round of the NCAA tournament against Long Island University. Your postseason coverage is presented by John Henry's, the official plumbing, HVAC, and electrical partner of Nebraska Athletics, bringing you all the action on the Husker Radio Network. Broadcast coverage starts on Friday at 6 with first serve at 7. Listen online or on the air. Go Big Red. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Farmers, ensure your engines have the power and performance to get the job done. Central Valley Ag can help with Ruby Field Master Diesel. With 4.5% more power and up to 5% better fuel economy, you can be sure your equipment is running on the best fuel. Register to win 500 gallons of Ruby Diesel when you contract 500 gallons or more. Enter to win at cvacoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. There's room at the table. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. 
how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Hi, I'm a volleyball. It's an okay life. I go back and forth about it. But I really wish I was a Nebraska Lottery Powerball or Mega Millions Mega Ball. See, all they have to do is mix around in a big plastic bubble and roll down a ramp, and then people win millions. What a great life. As for me, I get thrown around all day and have to worry about getting spiked, which is about to happen right now. Oh, ow! Couldn't you just do a nice, gentle tip? The Nebraska Lottery. Top prize odds vary by game. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student-athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890Nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. Farmers, ensure your engines have the power and performance to get the job done. Central Valley Ag can help with Rudy Fieldmaster Diesel. With 4.5% more power and up to 5% better fuel economy, you can be sure your equipment is running on the best fuel. Register to win 500 gallons of Ruby Diesel when you contract 500 gallons or more. Enter to win at cvacoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. There's room at the table. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Everybody wants a classic Christmas. Well, there's nothing more classic than cash. So until January 3rd, 2024, enter non-winning Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic Scratch Tickets online, and you could win $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, or $20,000. Hurry and jingle all the way to your nearest Nebraska Lottery retailer and have yourself a classic little Christmas with the whole family of Holiday Classic Scratch Tickets. Top prize odds vary by game. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Welcome back inside our Huskers Broadcast Center, brought to you by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and more Acres solutions for every field. Earlier today, Jessica sat down with Lindsey Peterson, who is the director of ops for Husker Volleyball. That was this week's subject for The Dig. Here's part of that. 
Congratulations. Uh, that had to be fun seeing the number one next to Nebraska on Selection Sunday. Yeah, it was really exciting for our team and um, just like coach told the team, like this is a reward for what you accomplished all season. It was a grueling season. You put, worked hard. You had some big matches. You won big matches and now your reward for all you put into the 10 weeks of conference and the four weeks of non-conference, your reward is the number one seed going to the NCAA tournament. So it's a We've, I think it's only happened for our program maybe four or five times, and um, it's a tough position to get because there's a lot of good teams out there, and um, you know you have to battle in the conference. Our conference is tough, so you know you're battling with some teams fighting for that position within your conference. But our team was excited and and are ready to uh, represent um, Nebraska here in this NCAA tournament. But they also know that. The work we put in now doesn't mean anything. Like everybody's right. starting on a clean slate. It's zero zero, and now it's just you know you got to win to advance. And so it's um, that do or die time of season. And I feel confident in our team. They they usually step up to the plate in those type of moments. Which I certainly want to dive into all things postseason, but I did want to go back to the last weekend and, and the first loss of the season. You know, after clinching the Big Ten title and then going into Wisconsin, Coach Cook said after after the match that he felt like this team played some really good volleyball stretches at Wisconsin. But, you know, overall after the match, how did they handle the first loss of the season? They hadn't experienced it all year. Uh, how how did they handle it in the locker room and, and bounce back the next day at Wisconsin or at Minnesota? Well, this is a competitive group and losing is not something they like to experience. And um, Yes, Wisconsin played an incredible match, and at times we had we were right there with them, and we actually had opportunities to win those first two sets, and um, just missed on a couple crucial points towards the end. But Wisconsin was a it was a battle. There was some really high level volleyball, which is great to see at this point in the season that we're at that level and we're competing at that level. Um, it's a really tough environment there. Wisconsin was going to come out on. You know, firing because they they needed to win that match probably to solidify a top four seed. So there was a lot on the line for them, and um, so we got their best shot. And unfortunately, it didn't work out for us. But like we like to say, if you're not winning, you should be learning. And so this is a lesson for us, and we can take away from this match some things we need to improve on and and go into the postseason. So hopefully, you know, it's a blessing in disguise, and we get better from it um, and learn from what what didn't go well for us in that match. Um, but put it behind us, and now we'll be ready the next time. What were some of the big learning things that you can take away from that match? We didn't we didn't pass well in that match, and a team that big and physical at the net, you've got to be able to pass. So your offense is pretty predictable, and to try to hit around a block like that um, is difficult. And so our offense is best when we pass, so we can run middles. Um, our middles had been successful the first time we played them. We passed pretty well. We had a lot of one on one opportunities in the middle against them. When we didn't pass, we were going up a big double block on the on the pens. So, and they they scouted us well. They they had prepped and learned from the time we'd played them here in Lincoln early on, and I think adjusted their defense a little bit to take away some of the strengths of our hitters. Um, but yeah, we gotta we gotta make adjustments on our end to blocking, um, make a few changes there, and and just understand. Um, how we can better offset or find their weaknesses in their offense and make their offense more predictable with our serve. And so serving and passing, we got to be better at. But um, also we had, we had some players that took some big swings at big points for us, and um, we did a lot of good things too. So you got to look at those and take the positive and the negative, but um, not dwell too much on the negatives, just learn and move forward. I feel like it's... Kind of can be daunting to carry an undefeated record for a team, whatever the sport might be. It's just, I feel like a lot of pressure. Could it be? Could it relieve maybe some of that pressure too? Knowing, hey, the, that zero's gone now. We can close a chapter on that. And and not that this team would focus on that. I know that they they focus on the right things. But just in the back of your mind, carrying that undefeated record and knowing that you hadn't lost yet, could that also be a positive too? Uh, I'm sure it, it relieves a little bit of the pressure. It's not anything we've talked about. Mm -hmm. We didn't put any pressure or talk anything about that undefeated season because that doesn't really mean anything. Yes, it helped us secure that number one seed, but being undefeated doesn't get us anything in the postseason. And so, um, you know, the players, the players feel a little bit of pressure. I think the pressure was maybe relieved a little bit from them having sealed the Big Ten Conference the week before, having won the championship the week before helped. And um, but. Yeah, undefeated, especially today, and and you see the parity in volleyball mm -hmm. and the level of volleyball across the nation. To go undefeated is 
an incredible, incredible feat. So just to think of the season we've had so far and to be at this point with only one loss and that loss coming to a top three team in the nation, um, this team has to feel pretty good about it. And, and our players understand that, you know, at this point, the margin of error is really small. And when you're fa facing those type of teams, you don't have very much room for error. And on Saturday or on Friday, we had a little bit, our margin was a little bit too big and, and it allowed Wisconsin to capitalize. So how proud were you guys of the way that the team responded on Saturday at Minnesota, which has been a tough place to play, right, uh, throughout the year. So the way that they came out and fought and, and got back in the win column. Yeah, Minnesota is a much improved team from the, we played them the first week of Big Ten. And so they have definitely improved. And they were another team that knew they needed to um, battle and try to get, get that win just for to secure a spot in the NCAA tournament. And um, they, they are a team that when you play there, it's a great environment. It's always a tough match when we play there. Um, we knew they were a physical team. Um, so we needed to, you know, learn from our Wisconsin match of what we didn't do against some of their big hitters and try to, to take that into Minnesota. And so it was a great response from our team. They played at a high level. They came out really focused and, um, you know, I, to battle there at the end and, and win that fourth set at really close set to not allow it to go five was really big and, and showed a lot of maturity and growth for our team. And, and it showed that they put the game behind from Wisconsin and move forward. And we talk to them all the time that the game has no memory. And so um, whether it's a set, a point, you know, it doesn't remember what happened the last play, the last match. And I think they really embraced that against Minnesota and put aside Saturday night and or Friday night and went into Saturday with a new set of focus and, and took care of business. Week in and week out, as I sit down and, and talk to you guys on, on this podcast, it seems like everybody that comes in here says, you know, there's, there's still room to grow. We're still improving. We still haven't been at our best yet. How close is this team to being at their best and peaking right now at the time when you want to be peaking, right? Yeah, we definitely want to peak in these next three weeks. And, um, I say that our team is still growing because we learned from Friday night and we're going to get better from that. And so, um, you know, we, we allow our team to be in a position to allow themselves to get better by the amount of rest they're getting to take care of themselves mentally, physically, emotionally, so they can give 100% now these next three weeks and they can give everything they have left in their tank to try to help us achieve this goal. And um, I think... Our, the way John trains and our staff trains and prepares this team, the way we go about our season, really enables us to peak at the right time. I mean, the way we structure our practices and, and prepare our team off the court with video, and it, it allows our team to be their best when it matters most. How um, much of a relief, how exciting is it when you see not just the number one seed, but the, just knowing what that means and you get to play the first two weekends. If, as long as you keep winning, you get to stay right here in front of Husker Nation for those first two weekends to get for a chance to go to the final four. Yeah, host, having the opportunity to host is a huge advantage and something that we definitely don't take for granted and know that we can use this and our fans and, you know, the atmosphere at Devaney to help us in those moments because everybody's fighting to stay alive and we know every team's going to give us their best shot. And so, um, we have, we have maybe a little, you know, extra sixth man, seventh man, I guess, in our crowd here and our fan support. And we know we'll have an incredible crowd and the atmosphere will be great. And everyone's going to be excited because everyone knows what's on the line for each match. When you get to this point, that's what makes this time of season. So fun is everyone understands the magnitude of each match. And so, um, it allows, for the atmosphere to be a little more rowdy and, and hopefully that plays to our advantage. But also just being at home, not traveling. I mean, we played three matches in six days on the road to end the Big Ten and that takes a lot out of you. And so to be able to be at home, sleep in your own bed, um, stick with your daily routine. We don't have to worry about, you know, travel delays and, you know, worrying about a different schedule is, is a big advantage as well. And so um, we're going to make most of that. and and do our best to make sure that we are we have four games here at home and and that we'll use being at home hopefully to help us get us to tampa so up first is long island university liu tell us about that what you guys are seeing out of them and and what we need to be watching for in that first matchup well i think the the thing you got to think about for this 
team is a lot of these teams are really hitting their full potential or probably hitting their full potential more than we are at this point. And so you're going to have a team that's going to be really excited to be here, to be in the NCAA tournament, to have an opportunity to play in front of this crowd, this type of atmosphere. Um, and Long Island is a team that they're a little bit smaller, so it, it, it gives us a different look offensively and, and their hitters. We're going to have to be prepared for different shots um, from their hitters, but they're also a passing defensive team. They're more six all-around players. You don't have just the really big physical players at the net that come out in the back row. And um, so it'll, they're, they're a good team. Um, we know we're going to get their best shot. We know that we're going to have to really focus on our side of the net. And there might be some ugly plays, but we have to stay focused and play each point at a time. And um, I, we'll be excited for that first match. It's just like Long Island, I'm sure, is super excited for it. So then, I guess, take us through how now that you go, you know, because when we've had you guys on throughout the season and it's like one match at a time and, and all of that, but now that it, you don't know who you're going to play and it, it's just who, who wins that next match that you advance, how do you guys go about as a staff preparing, getting ready for the next opponent with those quick turnarounds? So we will, we obviously know the four teams that will be here, the three other teams that will be coming to Lincoln this weekend. So we'll watch video on all of them. Our staff will break down video and start prepping on that. We'll do things in practice that will train for who we think might advance to our, who would be our next matchup maybe on Saturday. Throw in some things in practice, not specifically telling the players this is what this team does. We just throw in those in our practice to start preparing for those. So then once we know they advance, we've already seen that. Our girls have already practiced it and practiced. Then we could go back on Saturday morning. We'll watch film. I, I mean, our team will sit and watch the match, the first match Friday to see who advances and then we would watch film Saturday morning as well to, you know, start preparing for that team. But our coaches will have already broke down film on all three opponents to try to prepare for who we see to be a little bit ahead of the game and have a scout ready to go. So there's not so much to be done on Friday night into Saturday if we advance. That was part of the dig powered by Emeritus. And we had a little bit of technical difficulties, but I will get that up first thing tomorrow so you can listen to the full episode. That was just a portion. It was a 30-minute conversation with Lindsay. We dove into everything that happened over the weekend, previewed the upcoming weekend, and even that wasn't included on the recording, but just how much that she has to do behind the scenes to get this team to and from and, and prepared for all the things that go into a postseason that you don't think about always other than just like going to play the match but travel and and all that kind of stuff you know she's in charge of it it's it is just wild this time of year the tra the the schedule in that sport is unlike any other in that they play back-to-back -back days in different towns yeah you know you think about baseball softball they go for three games yes yeah basketball never really plays back-to-back -back different towns they might play one night and then take a night off. But volleyball, they'll go Friday, Saturday, different. That's hard. I feel like the most of that happens is like Nebraska plays Omaha or Creighton, right? And then comes back here in baseball or softball yeah. or like, you know, in Oklahoma, it's like Stillwater and Norman. But it's just, it doesn't, like that far away from yes. Wisconsin to Minnesota, it isn't, it's not easy. And so, you know, they finish up their season three of the last four on the road and then to be at Wisconsin, at Minnesota. So I know they're really, really Glad and, and thankful to be able to be home. They've earned this number one seed Absolutely. and a chance to play here all the way to the Final Four in Tampa. Hopefully that's the, the path that they are on. Some of you have asked about John Cook's uh, show. His last show will be Thursday night, 6 o'clock. JB will be here to take you through that. That'll be his final radio show of the year. How quick did that go? Seatbelt use saves lives, prevents injuries. Nearly 15,000 lives saved per year. Buckle up this message from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. 402-413-2400. The number if you want to fire off a text or a phone call. We're back with more of the show next. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, 
and technology to help bring us together. Wow. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Hey, Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student-athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890Nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tame and Forerunner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. When you're clocking out and happy hour's already started. But... You're clocking out, and happy hour's already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Woodhouse has been delivering you confidence in car buying since 1975. And now we're giving you the convenience of doing it 100% online with Buy Now. Anytime, from anywhere, you can compare hundreds of hand-picked, safety-inspected, free-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs that are available to purchase completely online. Shop smarter with personalized, estimated payments on all the inventory. Apply for financing and schedule your driveway delivery all online. Woodhouse, delivering a better way to car buy online with Buy Now. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers.
It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Wow. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Back inside our Acres Broadcast Center. Acres is the Midwest premier. John Deere Dieter, they have solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie back with you here on a Tuesday night. Tomorrow night, we'll have a short one for you. Just 30 minutes lead you into women's basketball. They host Florida Atlantic tomorrow night at PBA. Huskers coming off the split in the tournament down in St. Pete last week. They beat Lamar and then came up short against TCU. Back home now for a couple of games starting tomorrow night with FAU. Uh, Oregon State has replaced Jonathan Smith. Former Husker linebackers coach Trent Bray, who was here with Coach Riley, is going to be their new head coach. Trent is a wonderful gentleman. He will be, I think, a really good head coach. He's a very cerebral guy. So congrats. Really enjoyed my time when Trent was here as our linebackers coach a few years back. That's uh, cool news for him. The latest college football playoff poll came out tonight. This is the last one before the uh, the. The, the whole thing will be settled on Sunday after the championship games. The top four after the Ohio State loss to Michigan. Georgia's one. Michigan is two. Three is Washington and four is Florida State. Uh, that If all those teams win this weekend, that's what the playoff will be. I have no problems with those four. I'm not sure all four win this weekend. The, to me, the chaos will happen, Jessica, if Bama beats Georgia. Then yes. you got chaos. Yeah. What if Oregon beats Washington? I think Oregon gets in. I think Oregon's done a lot. They put a great schedule. Uh, I think they get in. And they so I'll I'll go back again just because of what my experience is, but there were two times that Oklahoma got in because they avenged the loss of the Big 12 championship game. Right. So it was Baker Mayfield's year. They didn't play Texas, but he they did win in the Big 12 championship. But Kyler Murray's year, they played Texas twice, lost to Texas down in the Cotton Bowl, but then played them again in the Big 12 championship. So they got to avenge that loss, and the committee put them in. So I think if, if things happen right, if Oregon beats Washington, I absolutely think they're in because, hey, beat them when it counted, right? right. And they avenge the lot. their one loss. You avenge it, I think they, they get in. And like I said, they played a really good schedule during the year. And they passed and the eye test, and they, they played do. well since that Washington game. Yeah, they do. And they almost, they probably should have won that game. Remember, they had, they went for it near midfield late with the lead, got stuffed. Washington had the short field. Oh, yes, I game. remember because I was the only one that picked, picked Oregon. Yes, okay, I'll, I'll let us get to a break, but what would be your ideal college football playoff at this point? Those, I, I think the four that are in there right now is pretty cool. I, I, I'm, I love Florida State, but without the quarterback, I'm not sure they really should be in the top final four. Yeah. Does so. the Big Ten get two in again? No. no. The SEC might if Bama wins. The SEC might. And then Texas could be screaming because they won at Tuscaloosa early in the year. Yep. So they yep. would have a, a gripe. That's why I said chaos happens. Chaos. If, I love it. If, I love chaos. If Bama beats Georgia. Look out for chaos. I right, need to get a break in. We're back to wrap up the show next. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks. Foundation Solutions, crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Hi, I'm a volleyball. It's an okay life. I go back and forth about it. But I really wish I was a Nebraska Lottery Powerball or Mega Millions Mega Ball. See, all they have to do is mix around in a big plastic bubble and roll down a ramp and then people win millions. What a great life. As for me, I get thrown around all day and have to worry about getting spiked, which is about to happen right now. Oh, ow! Couldn't you just do a nice, gentle tip? 
The Nebraska Lottery. Top prize odds vary by game. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student-athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890Nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Woodhouse Auto Family, your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. What a show tonight. Trev Albert's monthly AD show. We'll have John Cook's final volleyball show on Thursday. We're here just 30 minutes tomorrow night because of Husker women's basketball as they take on FAU. And I'm sure they're really anxious to get back out on the court they had such a bad first half, and you talked about it last night with Amy Williams. Bad first half with TCU, but then they came storming back and really made that a game in the second half. They really did. Not a great start, but uh, really showed what they were capable of in the second half. So lots to build off there, but I know they were disappointed that they, they dug themselves too big of a hole to get out of, but I think they're, they're ready to get back out there. Yeah, 7 o'clock tip tomorrow night at PBA. All right, tomorrow night on our short show, we are going to review Coach Royal's postseason Press conference. He's going to meet with the media tomorrow at 11:30. Give me a thing or two you're wanting or looking forward to hearing from him tomorrow. To me, it's going to be how are they, how are they managing this roster? They have so many guys that have decisions whether to come back or not. To me, I want to hear where they are at on that. It's wild to me that at this point, look how much, how many players have already entered the portal, and we really haven't seen many. None. Well, none, and then certainly. Um, just even this whole season, none that are really, really huge impact players, right? So that's going to be interesting and in, um, how they're managing that and those conversations and, and the guys, because there is a lot of young talent that, that's, that have uh, the ability to come back and, and a lot of guys that could return that could be huge for this program moving forward and also the coaching staff. You know, hopefully he'll address Tony White and uh, hopefully he's had a conversation and he's going to say, hey, He'll be back next year. That's yeah. what I want to hear the most that, tomorrow. That would be perfect. Remember, <laughs> on, on Senior Day Friday, 25 Huskers had their names called. 11, so less than half, they're done. They, they're yeah. eligible. But 14 guys still have to make a decision whether they want to end their career or take advantage of the COVID year. So there's just a lot of moving parts of that roster. Hopefully we'll get a glimpse at that. We'll review it all for you tomorrow night on the program. Thanks to Cam Camden, a la Cameron, who uh, finished out the show for us tonight because Cole left. Cole, Cole was anxious to get out of here, so we let him go home early. But Camden, we were in good hands with Cam. Yes, we were. Camden does a great job. He sure does. He's in the running for student MVP. Oh, boy. How about that? We'll have to name that in the future weeks. That's a great show tonight. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at nebraskachiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota.